for, you know, commercial production, at least in a large industrial sense. Um, there are folks who do make money with it. I do with mine because it was a expensive thing that I wanted to have for my own woodworking needs. And whenever you buy a $10,000 toy, you better have good justification. And I joke about it being a toy. I'll show you what I've done with it. Um, it, it has definitely been worth it. Uh, and I do mill, um, both custom milling for people, and I sell lumber, and I sell finished products sometimes. I do a little bit of everything, mostly trying to get rid of all this wood, <laughs> uh, which we bought. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But they make several different kinds of portable mills, and this one happens to be a radio mill that brings power to it. <coughs> sharpen here, 
which takes more time to explain how the sharpener works than it does to sharpen the whole thing. I mean, it's really fast, five teeth, and with these badly damaged teeth, it will cut perfectly straight, and the surface of the lumber will look just like it does with brand new teeth. Now, it'll cut a little better with new teeth. I'm not saying it's just unimpeded, so we'll slow it down a little bit, but not like a band mill, and if a band mill gets dull, it starts to track along the grain, and it cuts wavy wood, so your boards are vary in thickness. And so that's another big advantage of these radial mills is they keep on going even with damaged teeth. I hit a log over here off Indian Summer Road that I bought from a guy and went and milled at his house. I hit like, I forget, it was 13 or, or 11 or some horrible number of nails. And it just kept breaking the teeth and breaking the teeth. And they'll actually break. They're brazed on with brass. Those of you that weld know that brazing is not a real strong way to hold things on. But it's very fast and very fluid. So they're brazed on there. Well, when you hit metal, they'll break right off. And I got down to half of one tooth. I had half of one tooth. And I had this great big 6 by 8 timber worth about 110 bucks to me to sell sitting there uncut. And I said, well, I got nothing but time. And it took me 15 minutes, but with half of one tooth, I got that last piece. I recovered that last piece. So these are amazing in their ability to keep tracking and cut straight with, with a lot of damage to them. And the third reason to get a, a radial uh, or Lucas type mill versus a band mill is band mills need the logs lifted up onto the ground onto a carriage and then the band saw power head rise back and forth, usually hydraulically, but you got to lift the log up, which means you got to have hydraulic lifters on there, which takes the price of the mill from $10,000 $30,000. So a band mill with anything close to the length and diameter capabilities of this costs about thirty five dollars to $36,000. And you still can't find a mill that will cut as big a log as this one. This thing will cut behemoth. If it will fit between these rails, you can with a little, you have to move the mill, but you can cut a 6 foot or 7 foot diameter log. And you can, there are no band mills made that will cut a seven foot diameter log. Homeowner band mills. You know, wood guy. And that's possible because of these things here? That lift yeah. This, up so that you can this will lift. Well, see what you can do with a really, really big log. You don't have that much play in these, nor do you have that much side to side. But if you can fit it in here, then you can crib this thing up on wood blocks and saw, and then you'll have to dismantle the mill take your cribs out, reset it up, so it would take some time, but a log, you know, a six foot diameter log, 12 feet long, would have three or four thousand board feet of lumber in it. I mean, that's, you know, production wise, um, our record is about, I think it's 28, I don't keep written records, but I think it's 26 or 2800 board feet a day. All right, so if you've got that much in a log, you know, it's not a big deal to have to tear the mill down and reset it up. So you can do that. And then the biggest log you can cut in here without moving it, once you set the mill up, is about 54 inches. We did a 55-inch chestnut over in the valley, and we took a chainsaw because it was flared at the butt, and we kind of cut those flares off, and that let us move the carriage the way we need to. And you'll understand how this thing works. But the, the basis of it is a power head pivot, right? So you can cut 90 degrees. So you cut this way, and then you can rotated this way, it's belt driven right here, and so the little transmission right here, the little axle, uh, just drives whether it's horizontal or vertical, it doesn't care, and you just pivot it 90 degrees. Gas motor, 25 horsepower gas motor, for those of you interested in motors. The Kohler, which is a really good motor, so I have uh, 300, 332 hours on this mill in the last uh, six years and I've never repaired it for anything. But that's not even a lot of hours for a Kohler motor. Uh, change the oil every 100 hours, or uh, uh, yeah, every 100 hours, change the oil, change the transmission fluid every 100 hours, and uh, I've replaced the battery. The battery, the cold finally sapped my little 6 volt, or 12 uh, volt motorcycle battery. It's got a little motorcycle battery that it starts with. It's water lubricated. A lot of people are like, ooh, the water keep it cool? This thing doesn't generate any heat. These teeth are wider than the steel blade. So when it cuts a kerf, there is no contact between the wood and the blade. So there's no friction in there. 
But what it does is it helps prevent the buildup of uh, resin, which does slow the blade down for resinous woods like pine and Douglas fir. This particular wood that we've made this pile is all cedar. I got this one.